It was just before two o'clock this afternoon when pillars of black smoke could be seen coming out of the area behind me and it soon became apparent that something had gone wrong in the port area, more specifically at Jebelek. Now emergency services appeared shortly thereafter, cordoned off the area to help tackle the blaze as a peaceful Easter Sunday was thrown into turmoil with uh, firefighters and police officers recalled to help tackle the blaze which was brought under control just about two hours after it had started. Chaotic scenes as emergency services vehicles began to arrive at Waterport Place moments after the fire began. RGP officers directing traffic and moving people away from the area as large plumes of smoke enveloped the surrounding area. People in nearby estates gazing out towards the port area as sirens blared, most of Gibraltar by this point in the dark, so to speak, as power had been cut to the majority of the rock and those with a clear vantage point looked out as police and fire officers tackled the fire. No visible flames, but clearly something within the Jibalek compound was alight and causing smoke to billow out. The RGP were quick to cordon off roads to keep people and vehicles away from Waterport Place and to allow easy access for more emergency vehicles. The firefighters used foam, but Mother Nature did her part, perhaps, cooling the heated roof of the building as the black smoke lessened. Well, straight away, obviously, each essential services knows exactly what they have to do, and we work together a lot, and we train together in order to, to be able to deal with these scenarios. Uh, on our part, obviously, it was ensuring that uh, people within the estate right next to us, where we're standing right now, um, knew about the fire, um, were evacuated if need be, uh, which we take that in conjunction with advice we're given from the fire brigade or if those persons remain in the residences obviously with their windows closed because it's safe enough for them. Uh, and then what we do is we close the relevant roads, uh, create the, reg the relevant cordons and ensure that people don't come close to the area but at the same time we can continue with the traffic flow in the area so that the rest of Gibraltar can still travel around, around uh, normally without causing too much of a, a traffic matter problem. Was there ever a, a need or a moment where you thought that you would need to uh, evacuate the area? Well obviously the minute we're here we take uh, advice from the fire brigade and their safety officers throughout the time we're here uh, and they were happy that uh, people remained in their buildings uh, obviously with the windows closed with the smoke but certainly uh, there was at no point that we, we thought that the people needed to be evacuated if they had been on the advice from the fire brigade we would have done that straight away but from their advice we didn't need to. On arrival um, straight away we saw that this was something uh, out of the ordinary. Um, so I decided to make up uh, appliances, make up more personnel and uh, recall people in who are off duty. Okay, so uh, when you approach a situation like this, uh, how were you able to, what, what was the strategy in order to create, a, to, to tackle a fire that was, you couldn't get too close to? Well, uh, not just a fire of this type, but any type of incident, the, the main priority initially is to get as much information as you can. Um, both of what has happened, uh, who, uh, any people who may be uh, trapped inside, persons reported, um, and so on. Um, in terms of the supply, uh, we need the supply isolated, obviously, because um, if we apply water or foam to uh, live uh, equipment, that doesn't go well. Um, so the, the main priorities initially uh, was whether there was any persons reported. Um, then we isolated the electrical supply and the supply lines for diesel that go to the generators as well. Uh, so those were the main priorities initially prior to committing any, anybody in. Okay, and so uh, how long did it take to bring it under control? Uh, approximately three quarters of an hour to an hour to bring it under control. Um, problem is it was very um, treacherous conditions inside. Um, visibility was zero. Um, so we have, we have something uh, what we call um, thermal image cameras. Uh, that helps us detect heat in areas with poor visibility. We were using those as well inside with the crews inside, uh, but again, this information coming back wasn't very accurate either. So um, it's a question of balancing the risks versus the benefits. Um, and uh, we made a decision to start committing people in and investigate whether there's any other spots of fire uh, arising from, from within the incident. The fire seemed to be under control, but work was still obviously ongoing inside, as during our interview with Station Officer Colin Ramirez, he was called back to the vicinity. And we also spoke to a number of eyewitnesses near the area who told us of their perspective. Well, I was in Waterport Place at the time, and I saw the sort of billowing smoke and the alarms going off and so on. 
uh, then the power went out and that's when I looked out the window and I saw what was happening. But the uh, fire brigade were already in attendance, so, but it was, it looked very, very dark, very you were, menacing. You were in Waterfall Place itself, how yeah. quickly was that evacuated after it, it happened? Very, very quickly. I, I, was, I think I was one of the last to leave, and I, so I reckon it was very, very quick. It all happened very quickly. There was almost no one there when I left, let's put it that way. Well, it was round about lunchtime and we were having lunch and all of a sudden we heard, well, I didn't hear anything, it was just a tremor. We were sitting at the table and uh, the, the water started moving, the, everything, and we were just, you know, and it just passed away. I thought it might be a plane or I, I just didn't know. And then I started smelling the smoke and I just looked out of the window and there was this massive smoke, black smoke. Uh, that's it, really. And then after a little while, the police came and we had to be evacuated from our homes. And it was raining. I was, it was really a big, you know, because of the hassle with my mum partially disabled and the, the rain and, and the confusion. We didn't know where to go. So, but in Bamo, everything's been fine. The, the, the firemen have been, I think they've done a brilliant job.